Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? Welcome to another Fallout 76 camp build. And as Happy Builder World has returned with our public world, I thought this would be a good opportunity to jump in and build somewhere we're not normally able to. So we are at Wilson Brothers Auto Repair today. Yeah, this is a spot that I've seen people build at way, way long ago, but uh, a while back Bethesda changed things so we can't actually build here, which I don't really understand, but uh, it is what it is. So I thought, as we've got the opportunity and uh, a month of Happy Builder ahead of us, this would be a good time to jump in and do it. So let's have a look at where we are. There's my marker there, but we're actually at Wilson Brothers Auto Repair here. You can see we are right in the middle of the forest here. Head a little bit down. We've got uh, Gorge Junkyard just to the south. Morgantown just over the way here, and of course Vault 76 over there. Yeah, this was somewhere we used to be able to build at way back when, but unfortunately the uh, no build zone got expanded around it, which I don't really understand. It's a marked location, I understand that, but there are no quests that send you here and nothing particularly significant happening here, so it seems a, a little unnecessary to me, but there we go. However, with Happy Builder, we can actually build here, so I thought, starting things off, let's close up this little gap here over the office, make use of this otherwise dead corner and turn it into a bedroom. So we've got the free placement mode on, you can see at the bottom there. And we're just going to drop that floor there. Unfortunately it's a bit finicky trying to get this in. So we have to move around a little bit, but it will work eventually. And I want to try and lift this up so it's level with the floor on the right there and just nicely fills up that gap, which it's still being a bit awkward about. So basically what I'm going to do, chuck a floor floating in the air here. And then we can just sort of carefully manoeuvre this into place. It's just all about the angles there. It's a useful thing to bear in mind now, particularly if you're trying to do something a bit weird. Change up your angle a bit and uh, sometimes it'll play ball a bit better. But with a little bit of patience, we'll get that lined up. That looks all right to me. So we'll get rid of this spare now. And we'll just stick a railing on the edge here just to close it off. Don't want anybody falling out of bed. There we go. Nice. So, that will do for now, we'll come back here when we're decorating, and we'll head outside. Starting around the back here, I want to secure this place, because the idea is that somebody has come across it post-war and fortified it and set up shop here, so I'm going to start by closing off the back here. Just using the junk fences with the free placement options in Happy Builder that got expanded a while ago actually, which is great. We can basically do a few things we wouldn't otherwise be able to, so got that first fence in, I'm now just going to push these together so they make a kind of single fence just to fill that gap as it's a bit of an otherwise awkward size. When that's done, we'll head over to the other side and more or less repeat the procedure. Uh, we're going to do this a little differently. We use the large piece of junk fence that has the tyres on, so this one here. As, uh, I like this one, but it's a weird shape and it's a bit awkward to use sometimes, so... Uh, having the option now, I thought we'd take advantage. So I'll drop that in, that kind of sits nicely up against the cliff edge there, and leaves us with one small gap to plug up, for which a Nuka Cola machine will do the job nicely. Just about a perfect fit, actually, that. Especially with free placements, so we can get them sitting nice and snug. There we go. Looks good. So, on to the front part. So, I'm going to use the narrower, simpler junk fence here, and I'm going to be using these a lot, as I often do. The main reason being they're just a bit more cooperative than the other pieces, and there's a few awkward bits of ground and stuff here, even with uh, the extra sort of freedom we have available. So we'll nudge that up against that upper bar there. That works. Now let's jump over to the walls tab, and I want to put a gate in here. Specifically, I want to have a doorway, which we used to have those available in junk fence form back in Fallout 4, but sadly not here in 76. So I'm going to use the warehouse one first, as this is suitably scrappy. We'll nudge it over a little bit so it looks like it's uh, part of the wall and is being supported by the other piece there. Looks all right to me. Tiny little bit of floating maybe going on there, but... Uh, not much we can do about that, unfortunately. Can't sink things in very well, or not most things. Drop a guard post here on the edge. Should give us a little option to cover this entrance. We'll nudge it up a little bit, make it nice and secure. Make sure it's not floating. Looks okay. Looking good from out here. So that'll help us turn the corner quite nicely as well. So over here, this front edge is a little more awkward. It's a bit funny shaped. The ground's not particularly level. Bits are more or less cooperative. It it's a bit of a pain, but with a little bit of careful planning it works okay. So I'm going to use the chain link here because it's got a nice thin profile to it. So I can sit it much more closely to, well, the sort of lie of the land and up to the guard post here as well. Because the collision box is that much smaller. 
it's looking good. Now we're gonna hop back onto the junk fences. Did want to use this one a bit more, because it's a bit more interesting, but as you can see, it's popping up like crazy, which is the problem I was referring to. So we'll switch back to the simpler ones, and this one will sink in a little bit more willingly and sit a lot closer to the ground. So we'll line that up carefully. There we go. Neat and tidy. Same again with this corrugated metal one. Put that in there just to mix up the textures a bit. They're a bit too similar for me, really. I would have liked to mix it up a bit more than that. But Lie of the Land was a bit awkward, so got to do what you got to do. Now we're going to head over to the edge here. And I'm going to drop a wooden door in here just to mix up those textures again. We're going to push it right up against the edge of the building here. That's tucked in the corner. Quite like the way that looks. And I'm starting over here now just because we're trying to make these walls meet up and it's a bit easier to follow the line and meet in the middle rather than up against the wall there. So just a bit easier to jump over to the end. And we'll tuck another guard post in here and cover this particular approach. There we go. High enough to be nice and secure, but low enough that we can get our head under the reef. So one last bit to close up. Again, as you can see, we've got some really uneven ground, so the chain link's really uh, the best option here. And we'll plug that little gap at the bottom there up with a little concrete guard post because these things are pretty versatile, even in adventure mode. But here in Happy Builder, we can sink them in just a little bit better and plug that little gap up. So there we go, mostly secure. So let's head up to the top here. Nice flat roof, got to take the opportunity to build on this. So the first thing I'm going to do is sort out a way to get up here and plug this gap here at the same time. So we're going to use this upper floor, we're going to swap it out for one with some planks on it because it looks a bit more ramshackle and improvised repair job then. And I'm just going to carefully line that up using the free placement. Nice. Now I can go and find an appropriate staircase, switch back to the snapping. We'll go with the red rocket one. Now we can just snap that straight through the gap here and we've got sort of access to this upper level now. It's nice, it was quite a nice fit that, it's quite cool. However, this bottom end needs sorting out still, so that's a little bit of a jump up. Plan A was to use this little upper floor square here, a single square, and just kind of free place it on the bottom here and then turn the corner with that. However, the major issue with it is that uh, though I can free place it, I can't snap a second staircase to this, or any staircase at all. I thought I might be able to sort of manually place it in as I had done with the floor piece itself, but unfortunately you can't push these stairs too far through the floor. We'll see in just a moment. So, in hindsight, being 2020 as always, I could have used one of the longer ones and carefully positioned it so that I could snap the stairs to that and then swap them back out again. But um, I didn't think of that at the time. So, what we're going to go ahead and do is pull that out. We'll make a little bit of extra room. So, just spread these fences out a little bit more. Uh, just push those back a little bit. Now we've got a little gap that we need to close up. We'll grab some chain link, just use the half size one over there and we can use that just to close this little gap up here there we go nice and snug so jumping back over the top got a little bit more space on the inside now so now we can push on with uh, setting up our little miniature landing and we're going to go for the full sized well half sized floor here the long floor and we'll carefully put this one in manually as well and we'll take a different approach to what I had planned originally. So I'm just going to line this up a little better so there's a bit more clearance at this left-hand end. And we're going to grab the foundation stairs. Happy Builder allowing for free placement again. We will just carefully position those in, nudge them up to the edge so the right height. Nice soft back on these. So there we go. Now we can path nice and easily up to the top. A little bit more dressing up to be done on this. We need to make sure it's properly supported. So a couple of posts under the corners here. Easiest way to place these is to place them down and then move them into place afterwards. Otherwise it's really kind of finicky. So that's what I'm doing here. These things are a bit fiddly to get exactly where you want them, but they do work. Much easier to do with the, the free placement available. If only we had it in adventure mode. But a little bit of patience and there we go. Nice. Now we'll tweak this one a little bit, make sure it's suitably supported there. Nice. We'll head around the other side. So plan here was to use a couple of posts on this side as well. But in the end I decided to do something a little different when I spotted it. Which we'll get to in just a sec, but you can see the posts do work. So here, the stairs look like they're supporting the front edge quite nicely actually. So I thought I'll pull this post out and we'll use the stairs to do that instead. We'll make a few little adjustments. There we go. That looks 
pretty decent. Now we can move on, and as we can't fit stairs in on the other side of this, we might as well put a railing in, just to close it off quite nicely. There's one, there's another, and there we go. Access to the roof is now enabled. <laughs> so, speaking of the roof, let's put some railings up around here so we don't fall off, and we can have some extra guard posts. We can use this green barricade that I don't get a lot of opportunity to use. It's a bit annoying sometimes in adventure mode with the way it clips down through the ground. And it doesn't always fit in either, but it was nice to use it for a change this time. So, pulling it back has been a bit awkward. For some reason it says it's trying to block the furniture entry, but something to do with it clipping through the roof, no doubt. Which makes absolutely no sense, given that it doesn't have any activation functions, so... Who knows, but uh, with free placement we can nudge it up a little bit higher, get it nice and lined up with the edge there. Looks good to me. And we've got a starting point for this end. So I'm going to switch over to the perimeter wall railings when I can find them. There we go. And we'll close up the edges of this. So I'm going to free place this in quite nicely. However, we have the slight issue with some slightly excessive clipping going on there. So we'll shunt this barricade over to the corner as it works quite nicely there, creates a bit of extra room. And then we'll put this in, carefully lift it up a little higher. Doesn't look that well supported, but it'll do the job. Tiny bit of clipping there, so we'll try and tweak it a little bit more and reduce that a bit. Only so much will be successful there, but uh, I can live with that. So we'll grab the other perimeter wall railing, and we're just going to put this on the side. This one's particularly good because it looks a bit more stable. I'm just going to carefully line that up with the red bar at the edge there. Yeah, it looks alright to me. Yep, we're good. And then we'll grab one of the cement guard posts again. And just set it on a bit of an angle here, just to kind of frame the entrance by the stairs there. There we go. Nice. So, heading over to this next end, we're going to basically repeat the procedure. We'll start off by plugging up this rather large hole. So we're going to grab a nice scrappy floor here. Use free placement, just drop it in. Now we've got some planks going over the hole there. And I tried a few things here, decided on basically the same thing as I've just done. And we'll turn the snapping back on, just to put that in, neat and tidy, and there we go. I say neat and tidy, but I actually kind of mean scrappy. But that's the vibe we're going for, and it looks good. So let's grab a guard post and drop this in on the end. We'll mix up the textures again. Just line that one up a little bit. That was good. Grab another railing. We can use the raw cement barricade. This one's a Hunt from the Treasure Hunter reward. It's quite a nice little thing, this. Don't get a lot of opportunity to use it, but... Uh, Looks reasonably scrappy up here, so I'll drop that in neat and tidy. Grab another railing here as it kind of fits the gap quite nicely. There we go. And last but not least, one more cement guard post again on an angle just to frame off these stairs. And with that done, that's pretty much the structural work done. I think it's time to head off and decorate this place. So, I will catch you all in the tour in just a moment. So there we go, one decorated, fortified Wilson's Bro Wilson Brothers Auto Repair, even if I can remember the name of this place. Yeah, I've wanted to work on this place for quite a while, I thought it'd be a great place for a kind of scrappy, fortified uh, home, that sort of place somebody might move into, but uh, with the lack of opportunity in adventure mode, I've been waiting for Happy Builder to come back so I could do it, and here we go. I added a few extra bits and pieces out here, just to kind of give a bit more texture, kind of draw everything together and make it a little bit more cohesive because we've already got pallets and barrels and stuff out here adding a few extra bits just kind of completes the look a little bit a decent view there a few signs over the door there just to kind of hide the sort of squareness a little bit of the uh, doorway let's pan around the front have a look at this chucked a barricade on the front there just to thicken up the chain link a little bit add a little bit extra depth and texture to it a little sign out front as well i do like that sign just, just as well because it took a while to put it together <laughs> yeah working with the got the telegraph pole there as well a few bits of uh, trees and stuff just really getting a little extra depth and texture to things there we go there is our other entrance with a few bits and pieces outside sort of things we would expect to see at uh, cluttering up a, a garage basically along with a few other bits and pieces too just to dress it up we've already got signs in place so i thought we'd add a bit more more barrels and stuff as well We'll head on through this mesh gate. I thought metal mesh gate on this side just to contrast with the wood. And we've gone for the red wood one on the other side. It's reasonably improvised to contrast with the metal. So, looks alright to me. Here we go. 
So this place, there's a lot of stuff already cluttering the place up a bit, and we can't really remove too much of it. There's the ice machine and the trolley that's lying on its side there. So as I can't get rid of it, I thought I should lean into it and really go with that scrappy kind of vibe, which uh, I think it's more or less works quite nicely. I'll tuck the worm farm in there and the uh, Nuka-Cola machine as well. I figure that chair's just kind of been kicked underneath the worm farm. In actuality, it's there and I can't do anything about it, but... Uh, Free placement allowed me to sort of build over it, which works quite well. Here's a little entrance to the upper area. Amazing what one plant will do for a spot, that. <laughs> works quite nicely there. So, let's pan our way upstairs and have a little look at this upper level. So I've got a fence on the ridge line there, as it's a bit awkward to build over the top of that. I didn't really want to go crazy with that sort of thing. So, I thought we'll just fence it off, and then any grenades are more likely to roll away from the guards. See, I've got a, a mannequin up there and another one at the other end just to provide some sort of pretend guards for this place. And a little place to hang out up here as well. And my boxes and stuff. Kept it simple, but uh, added a few bits of decoration as well. Just to add a bit of colour and texture and stuff up here. Got a few solar panels around because they look suitably scavenged and scrappy. So they go quite well on this sort of build. There's our other guard at this end. Yeah, a tiny little bit of flickering going on there. It's unfortunate, but what can we do? quite happy that free placement allowed me to get that chair and that uh, lantern actually a lot closer to the table which is a bit awkward sometimes so quite pleased about that yeah simple up here but does the job nice lookout spot and somewhere you can hang in the uh, nice sunny Appalachian afternoon if you would like to so heading back on downstairs we'll dodge some of the uh, scattered furniture and head on inside so I've got a uh, camp ally there as well. I've got Sam's weapons workbench on there. Unfortunately, we can't use that. But I figured Sam was kind of a good fit for this place, so it's quite cool to have him wandering around. So let's head on inside. Now, there are a couple of workbenches that are already in place here, so I thought I'd just add ones I needed on top of that. So the Tinker's bench in there, an extra weapons workbench. Drop the Fusion Flea stash box in here as well, because, well, you know, it's a mechanic shop so made sense to have a bit of a car in here as well Sam's getting in the way a little bit there there's a few bits and pieces of stuff around here that do get in the way a tiny bit like the bin up there and a few little boxes and stuff so uh, those kind of fly around a bit when you're here but you can kind of shove them out of the way so that you can get furniture in which works quite well a few bits and pieces on the wall tuck some decorations in tuck some uh, display racks for the weapons on those uh, racks that are already on the wall so we can actually use them. We'll head on through to the office. Wish we had that Radiation King poster, it's cool. There's quite a lot of uh, junk and stuff floating around in here already, so... Kind of hard to do anything with this space, so I thought I'd put an extra chair in here, drop my uh, vendors on the desks there, and it'll work quite well as a little player vending room. Let's make our way around the corner here. I really wish we had that diagnostic cart, and a whole bunch of other stuff that we actually have here as well, available to build with, but... Uh, Works quite nicely in here, in what's otherwise our crafting space. A couple of bits of wall decor there. Head up towards the bedroom. I carefully managed to get a couple of boards over that window there, which I wanted to kind of block the breeze from blowing into the bedroom, you know. But uh, it was a bit of a pain to do, but it worked. Got some window boards over the window at the back there as well. They've sunk into the wall quite nicely. And a fairly simple standard bedroom, but gives somebody somewhere to get a bit of shut-eye if they need to. Nice and comfortable, or as comfortable as you're going to get here. And it's a scrappy wasteland away. Loads of plushes to dress it up, because you gotta. A little kitty on the chair that unfortunately we can't use, but uh, I kind of wish we could use those, but we'll have them to build, that'd be great too. Yeah, nice little bedroom, that kind of worked out quite nicely. Simple but effective. So let's make our way downstairs again and have a little look outside the back door. So this place doesn't normally have a door at the back here. It's um, one I added in, and with the free placement of Happy Builder Mode, I was just able to just carefully line it up and drop it in there. But the metal door looked like it belonged. That's what we went for. A couple of plants and uh, crops out here. Now this spot is always going to be scrappy as hell, this back area of the garage. So I thought again I'd lean into that and uh, pile up some extra Kind of, we've got the brewing station there, some extra boxes, crates, and other junk. Sort of squeezing the bathroom and the shower and stuff out here. Just to kind of keep that really scrappy vibe, seeing as I'm stuck with it either way. Which I'm generally fine with. And uh, make this nice kind of scrappy area out the back. With uh, a few crops just squeezed in. 
for a little bit of extra flavour. A little fridge in the back there that I do wish I had a more beaten up version of, but uh, I haven't, so I might do what I get available. Swing back on inside. Yeah, pretty happy with this spot. I think it looks um, suitably wasteland, certainly in keeping with the sort of place wasteland denizens might set up, the settlers or something, if they were setting up an outpost on this side of the map. Very, very junky, very, very scrappy, but nice and organic. Definitely keen on that. Definitely see this being uh, a small uh, occupied area. Let's head back out the other door, as we can. Those are up there. I did have to lock these doors for the purposes of the, the tour, as Sam has a habit of opening them. But what can you do? Yeah. I like the way this all kind of comes together along this wall. Kind of uh, looks sort of continuous, which is what I was going for. It looks quite nice. So I'll sort of pan back around the front here. Have one last look across the front as we wind things down. Yeah, quite happy with this one. Wanted to build here for a while. I'm pretty pleased with how it's come out. I hope you folks did enjoy this one. If you did, please consider dropping subs and likes. I very, very much appreciate it. Down below the video, you'll find social media links, the merch store and channel memberships and all those other good bits and pieces if you want to support the channel in that way. I very, very much appreciate it. It really helps out. And if you get a chance to join us for live streams as well, we are, of course, playing Fallout 76 and we're working through The Witcher 2 as well at the moment, which has been good fun. So I do hope to see you there. But for now, thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.